Borland. Borland Software Corporation is a software company that facilitates software deployment projects. Borland was first headquartered in Scotts Valley, California, then in Cupertino, California, and now in Austin, Texas. It is now a MicroFocus International subsidiary. It was founded in 1983 by Niels Jensen, Ole Henriksen, Moens Glad, and Philippe Kahn. Three Danish citizens, Niels Jensen, Ole Henriksen, and Moens Glad, founded Borland Limited in August 1981 to develop products like Word Index for the CP slash MOP rating system using an off-the-shelf company. However, response to the company's products at the CP slash M82 show in San Francisco showed that a U.S. company would be needed to reach the American market. They met Philippe Kahn, who had just moved to Silicon Valley, and who had been a key developer of the micro. The three Danes had embarked, at first successfully, on marketing software first from Denmark, and later from Ireland, before running into some challenges at the time when they met Philippe Kahn. Kahn was chairman, president, and CEO of Borland Incorporated from its inception in 1983 until 1995. Main shareholders at the incorporation of Borland were Niels Jensen, 250,000 shares, Ole Henriksen, 160,000, Moens Glad, 100,000, and Kahn, 80,000. Borland developed a series of well-regarded software development tools. Its first product was Turbo Pascal in 1983, developed by Anders Hitzlsberg, who later developed .NET and C-Sharp for Microsoft, and before Borland acquired the product sold in Scandinavia under the name of Compass Pascal. 1984 saw the launch of Borland Sidekick, a time organization, notebook, and calculator utility that was an early and popular Terminate and Stay Resident Program TSR for DOS operating systems. By the mid-1980s the company had become so successful that it had the largest exhibit at the 1985 West Coast Computer Fair other than IBM or AT&T. Bruce Webster reported that the legend of Turbo Pascal has by now reached mythic proportions, as evidenced by the number of firms that, in marketing meetings, make plans to become the next Borland. After Turbo Pascal and Sidekick the company successfully launched other applications such as SuperKey and Lightning, all developed in Denmark. While the Danes remained majority shareholders, board members included Kahn, Tim Berry, John Nash, and David Heller. With the assistance of John Nash and David Heller, both British members of the Borland board, the company was taken public on London's unlisted securities market, USM, in 1986. Schroeder's was the lead investment banker. According to the London IPO filings, the management team was Philippe Kahn as president, Spencer Ozawa as VP of Operations, Marie Bourget as CFO, and Spencer Layton as VP of Sales and Business Development, while all software development was continuing to take place in Denmark and later London as the Danish co-founders moved their dot A first US IPO followed in 1989 after Ben Rosen joined the Borland board with Goldman Sachs as the lead banker and a second offering in 1991 with Lazard as lead banker. All offerings were very successful and oversubscribed. In 1985 Borland acquired Analytica and its Reflex database product. The engineering team of Analytica, managed by Brad Silverberg and including Reflex co-founder Adam Bosworth, became the core of Borland's engineering team in the USA. Brad Silverberg was VP of Engineering until he left in early 1990 to head up the Personal Systems Division at Microsoft. Adam Bosworth initiated and headed up the Quattro project until moving to Microsoft later in 1990 to take over the project which eventually became Access. In 1987 Borland purchased Wizard Systems and incorporated portions of the Wizard C technology into Turbo C. Bob Jervis, the author of Wizard C became a Borland employee. Turbo C was released on May 18, 1987 and an estimated 100,000 copies were shipped in the first month of its release. This apparently drove a wedge between Borland and Niels Jensen and the other members of his team who had been working on a brand new series of compilers at their London Development Center. An agreement was reached and they spun off a company called Jensen & Partners International JPI, later Top Speed. JPI first launched a MS-DOS compiler named JPI Modula 2, that later became Top Speed Modula 2, and followed up with Top Speed C. Top Speed C++ and Top Speed Pascal compilers for both the MS-DOS and OS-2 operating systems. The Top Speed compiler technology exists today as the underlying technology of the Clarion 4GL programming language, a Windows development tool. 
In September 1987 Borland purchased ANSA software, including their Paradox, version 2.0, database management tool. Richard Schwartz, a co-founder of ANSA, became Borland's CTO and Ben Rosen joined the Borland board. The Quattro Pro spreadsheet was launched in 1989 with, at the time, a notable improvement in charting capabilities. Lotus Development, under the leadership of Jim Manzi, sued Borland for copyright infringement. See look and feel. The litigation, Lotus Dev. Core. v. Borland International Incorporated brought forward Borland's open standards position as opposed to Lotus closed approach. Borland, under Kant's leadership, took a position of principle and announced that they would defend against Lotus' legal position and fight for programmers' rights. After a decision in favor of Borland by the First Circuit Court of Appeals, the case went to the United States Supreme Court. Because Justice John Paul Stevens had recused himself, only eight justices heard the case, and it ended in a 4 to 4 tie. As a result, the First Circuit decision remained standing, but the Supreme Court result, being a tie, did not bind any other court and set no national precedent. Additionally, Borland was known for its practical and creative approach towards software piracy and intellectual property, IP, introducing its Borland No-Nonsense License Agreement. This allowed the developer-slash-user to utilize its products just like a book, he or she was allowed to make multiple copies of a program, as long as only one copy was in use at any point in time. In September 1991 Borland purchased Ashton Tate bringing the DBase and Interbase databases to the house, in an all-stock transaction. Competition with Microsoft was fierce. Microsoft launched the competing database Microsoft Access and bought the DBase clone Fox Pro in 1992, undercutting Borland's prices. During the early 1990s Borland's implementation of C and C++ outsold Microsoft's. Borland survived as a company, but no longer had the dominance in software tools that it once had. It has gone through a radical transition in products, financing, and staff, now a very different company from the one which challenged Microsoft and Lotus in the early 1990s. The internal problems that arose with the Ashton Tate merger were a large part of the fall. Ashton Tate's product portfolio proved to be weak, with no provision for evolution into the GUI environment of Windows. Almost all product lines were discontinued. The consolidation of duplicate support and development offices was costly and disruptive. Worst of all, the highest revenue earner of the combined company was DBase with no Windows version ready. Borland had an internal project to clone DBase which was intended to run on Windows and was part of the strategy of the acquisition, but by late 1992 this was abandoned due to technical flaws and the company had to constitute a replacement team, the Object Vision team, redeployed, headed by Bill Turpentari do the job. Borland lacked the financial strength to project its marketing and move internal resources off other products to shore up the DBase slash W effort. Layoffs occurred in 1993 to keep the company afloat, the third instance of this in five years. By the time DBase for Windows eventually shipped, the developer community had moved on to other products such as Clipper or Foxbase, and DBase never regained significant share of Ashton Tate's former market. This happened against the backdrop of the rise in Microsoft's combined office product marketing. A change in market conditions also contributed to Borland's fall from prominence. In the 1980s, companies had few people who understood the growing personnel computer phenomenon, and so most technical people were given free reign to purchase whatever software they thought they needed. Borland had done an excellent job marketing to those with a highly technical bent. By the mid 1990s, however, companies were beginning to ask what their turn was on the investment they had made in this loosely controlled PC software buying spree. Company executives were starting to ask questions that were hard for technically-minded staff to answer, and so corporate standards began to be created. This required new kinds of marketing and support materials from software vendors, but Borland remained focused on the technical side of its products. During 1993 Borland explored ties with WordPerfect as a possible way to form a suite of programs to rival Microsoft's nascent integration strategy. WordPerfect itself was struggling with a late and troubled transition to Windows. The eventual joint company effort, named Borland Office for Windows, a combination of the Word Perfect Word Processor, Quattro Pro Spreadsheet and Paradox Database, was introduced at the 1993 Comdex Computer Show. Borland Office never made significant inroads against Microsoft Office. Word Perfect was then bought by Novell. In October 1994, 
Borland sold Quattro Pro ad rights to sell up to a million copies of Paradox to Novell for $140 million in cash, repositioning the company on its core software development tools and the interbase database engine and shifting toward client-server scenarios and corporate applications. This later proved a good foundation for the shift to web development tools. Philippe Kahn and the Borland board disagreed on how to focus the company, and Kahn resigned as chairman, CEO and president. After 12 years, in January 1995, Kahn remained on the board until November 7, 1996. Borland named Gary Witzel as CEO, but he resigned in July 1996. William F. Miller was interim CEO until September of that year, when Whitney Geelin became interim president and CEO, along with other executive changes, and then continued to have a succession of CEOs including Dale Fuller and Todd Nielsen. The Delphi One Rapid Application Development RAD environment was launched in 1995 under the leadership of Anders Hitzelsberg. In 1996, Borland acquired Open Environment Corporation, a Cambridge-based company founded by John J. Donovan. On November 25, 1996, Del Yoakum was hired as Borland CEO and chairman. In 1997, Borland sold Paradox to Corel, but retained all development rights for the core BDE. In November 1997. Borland acquired Visagenic, a middleware company that was focused on implementations of Chorba. On April 29, 1998, Borland refocused its efforts on targeting enterprise applications development. Borland hired marketing firm Lexicon Branding to come up with a new name for the company. Yoakum explained that the new name, Enterprise, was meant to evoke integrating the enterprise. The idea was to integrate Borland's tools, Delphi, C++ Builder and Spilter with enterprise environment software, including Visagenix implementations off Corba, Visibroker for C++ and Java, and the new product, Application Server. For a number of years, both before and during the enterprise name, Borland suffered from serious financial losses and poor public image. When the name was changed to enterprise, many thought Borland had gone out of business. In March 1999, DBase was sold to Xoft Incorporated. which was soon renamed to DBase Incorporated. In 2004 DBase Incorporated was renamed to Database Intelligence Incorporated. In 1999, Dale Fuller replaced Yoakum. At this time Fuller's title was Interim President and CEO. The interim was dropped in December 2000. Keith Gottfried served in senior executive positions with the company from 2000 to 2004. A proposed merger between Enterprise and Corel was announced in February 2000, aimed at producing Linux-based products. The scheme was abandoned when Corel's shares fell and it became clear that there was really no strategic fit. Interbase 6.0 was made available as open-source software in July 2000. In January 2001, the Enterprise name was abandoned and the company became Borland once more. Under the Borland name and a new management team headed by President and CEO Dale Al Fuller, a now smaller and profitable Borland refocused on Delphi, and created a version of Delphi and C++ Builder for Linux, both under the name Kylix. This brought Borland's expertise in integrated development environments to the Linux platform for the first time. Kylix was launched in 2001. Plans to spin off the Interbase division as a separate company were abandoned after Borland and the people who were to run the new company could not agree on terms for the separation. Borland stopped open-source releases of Interbase and has developed and sold new versions at a fast pace. Delphi 6 became the first integrated development environment to support web services. All of the company's development platforms now support web services. c -sharp Builder was released in 2003 as a native c -sharp development tool, competing with Visual Studio.net. As of the 2005 release, c -sharp Builder, Delphi for Win32, and Delphi for .NET have been combined into a single IDE called Borland Developer Studio, though the combined IDE is still popularly known as Delphi. In late 2002 Borland purchased design tool vendor together soft and tool publisher Starbase, makers of the Star Team Configuration Management Tool and the Caliber RM Requirements Management Tool. Eventually, Caliber RM was renamed as Caliber. The latest releases of JBuilder and Delphi integrate these e-tools to give developers a broader set of tools for development. Former CEO Dale Fuller quit in July 2005, but remained on the board of directors. 
Former COO Scott Arnold took the title of Interim President and Chief Executive Officer until November 8, 2005, when it was announced that Todd Nielsen would take over as CEO effective November 9, 2005. Nielsen remained with the company until January 2009, when he accepted the position of Chief Operating Officer at VMware. CFO Eric Prush then took Hoover as Acting President and CEO. In October 2005, Borland acquired Legadero, in order to add its IT management and governance suite, called Tempo, to the Borland product line. On February 8, 2006, Borland announced the divestiture of their IDE division, including Delphi, Builder, and Interbase. At the same time they announced the planned acquisition of Segway Software a maker of software test and quality tools, in order to concentrate on application life cycle management, ALM. On March 20, 2006, Borland announced its acquisition of Gauntlet Systems, a provider of technology that screens software under development for quality and security. On November 14, 2006, Borland announced its decision to separate the developer tools group into a wholly owned subsidiary. The newly formed operation, CodeGear, was responsible for four IDE product lines. In early 2007 Borland announced new branding for its focus around open application lifecycle management. In April 2007 Borland announced that it would relocate its headquarters and development facilities to Austin, Texas. It also has development centers at Singapore, Santa Ana, California, and Linz, Austria. On May 7, 2008, Borland announced the sale of Code Gear Division to Embarcadero Technologies for an expected $23 million price and $7 million in Code Gear accounts receivables retained by Borland. On May 6, 2009, the company announced it was to be acquired by Microfocus for $75 million. The transaction was approved by Borland shareholders on July 22, 2009, with Microfocus acquiring the company for $1.50 slash share. Following Microfocus shareholder approval and the required corporate filings, the transaction was completed in late July 2009. It was estimated to have 750 employees at the time. The products acquired from Segway Software include Silk Central, Silk Performer, and Silk Test. The Silk line was first announced in 1997. Other programs are. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.